the concept of transversal histories is is new. No, nobody's kind of thought of this or named it as such before. Yet I would argue that a lot of thinkers have been, you know, travelling around in that part of the forest um, for quite a long time. Um, and the, for instance, the appendix to my doctoral thesis, which I published as a separate volume here, is entitled The Biographical Encyclopedia of Transpersonal Theorists, Historians, Psychologists and Philosophers. And this is just looking from 1945 to 2001. Okay. Um, it's a kind of who's who of people that have been working in this, this area. Now, what is, what is transpersonal? Um, for those that aren't familiar with the term, it was first coined by Carl Jung, the Swiss psychologist. And it's a German ter term, in fact. Um, Überwusstein, I believe, the, the original term. Um, and it means transpersonal. It relates to psychic phenomena or psychological states of consciousness and awareness that transcend the normal. So our normal personality operates at a horizontal level. We relate to each other. We say, how are you? Have a cup of tea. You know, we might share feelings with each other and say, I'm really upset. You know, my daughter's just run off with the milkman and whatever. But we don't normally sit down and say, I just had this extraordinary out-of-body experience where I just saw my father out of body and he's been dead 10 years and he told me what it's like. You know, so transpersonal experiences relate to um, what we could call supernatural or paranormal phenomena. Um, and in fact, they're more common than people admit to or realise. One of my friends that I've worked with for many years, a guy called John Francis Phipps, wrote a book called The Common Experience based on the archives of the Alastair Hardy Research Unit, which deals with um, ordinary people writing in about their spiritual experiences. And, you know, the sense of awe, the sense of oneness with the universe, um, the sense of the numinous, as it's called, by Rudolf Otto, is more common than people realise. Um, and that, that kind of... That would be a transpersonal experience. Um, it's, it's from there, it's a matter of degrees to get to, say, Buddha's experience of enlightenment or the experience of samadhi that Zen monks are trying for or the experience of, of divine union with Christ that Christian mystics would seek to attain. There was a thing in the paper today about a, um, a Christian mystic who's a hermit in Shropshire um, and she wants to live there in peace. She's been there for a few years, just living a spiritual life. Um, unfortunately the owners of the house want to sell it and she's desperately trying to raise the funds to stay there um, I think that spiritual dimension of life is very important, we need these oases of calm and, and, and spiritual healing and so on, that's what this manner can be and is um, and some, some, a couple of years ago I had a dream, I wrote to Prince Charles suggesting that when he's crowned he should set up a project to rebuild some of our destroyed abbeys and monasteries which are in ruins around the country it would give work to craftsmen and, you know, lots of unemployed people from the towns. And we could rebuild the whole network of spiritual retreat centres because the land is often still owned by the Crown and, and it's managed by English Heritage or whatever. We've got about 400 wonderful ruined abbey sites around the country which could be brought back into use, I think. Um, so transpersonal history would look at the history of people's encounter with the spiritual dimension. It's concerned with um, how people experience the divine in every single culture, every single religious tradition. It's not, it's not about a particular religious view of history. It's saying religion is too important, actually, to leave it to the religions. <laughs> and it's saying that we need to be scientific about how we study the transpersonal. You know, Muhammad in the cave in Mecca hearing this angelic voice that later becomes the Quran is a hugely important transpersonal experience. It needs to be studied and discussed and, and analysed, and we need to understand what happened. And interestingly, in, in Islamic thought, there is a whole tradition of people that have studied that and that evaluate the different kinds of prophetic messages people get. Um, Muhammad is known as a rasul, which means a messenger. It's a particular th kind of thing. But there are other prophets who get different levels of, of messages, um, some just for themselves, some for a family, some for a group, you know, not all for mankind as a whole. Um, 
and the same Zen Sikh tradition. You know, Guru Nanak, again, what, what was the voice that he heard? What was the spiritual experience? By tradition, he vanished into a river and experienced unity, came out again three days later, saying there is neither Hindu nor Muslim. Something happened to him in that experience, the three days he was away, where he saw beyond the veil of separate religious illusions and went to a place of divine unity. The same thing happened to Moses on the mountain with the burning bush. What was the experience? For those of you that don't know, there's a new film called The Moses Code, which is an amazing film, made by James Twyman, um, which explores what, what happened to Moses. What was the experience of unity he saw? Um, and why, I mean, why am I interested in transpersonal history? Why have I got into this? Is because we're living in a crucial time in world history, when the world's on the brink of destroying itself through religious wars, racial conflicts, cultural conflicts. This country's troops are fighting in Afghanistan at the moment. Um, you know, to the death, it seems. Nobody's got the intelligence to stop it on either side. Um, and there are honourable people on both sides. I mean, I, I've glimpsed a way of solving this at the highest possible level of human concord and unity, and that's what I want to share in this series. And that's the theory behind transpersonal history, is if we can get the scholars and sages of the planet together to share the deepest thinking they're capable of about man's spiritual strivings, you know, we would realise that all our greatest minds and prophets are just like little... They're glimpsing, um, you know, like fireflies... Some, some aspects of divine truth but all around them is you know the great starry sky unexplored to, to use a metaphor that Newton first developed um, so that's kind of why and what it's about now um, so where would it start from if, if I mean this is quite a revolutionary idea actually you know because most schools of history are quite specific and concrete they deal with the history of railways you can go in any bookshop and the world and find the history of railways, the history of Sompton Church, the history of the Brighton to London vintage car run, you know, everything has a history, right, the history of this manor, you know, the, the Victoria County Sussex of England, um, Victoria County History of England has a Sussex ten volumes and it goes into detail on each village, um, you know, this, this apparently is a 11th century manor house. So history is often seen as very concrete and very specific and focused on the particular. What I'm interested in the field of transpersonal history is the, the much bigger picture. It's, it's, it's to do with the, the, the kind of cosmic history of the planet, history of mankind's evolution as a whole, and ultimately the history of the evolution of consciousness. Because if, we're, if as I've just defined the field, it's about mankind's encounter with the supernatural, um, then what's the history of that? Where do we first start having visions? Where do we first start encountering the divine in that way? Um, and for that, you have to look at the history of consciousness itself. How do we do that? Um, is by looking at the evolution of mankind. And what I'm interested in, in you know, introducing in the notion of transpersonal history is that it, we have to work hand in glove with, with, with anthropology to start with. The history of, of our species, where we come from as beings, where consciousness first develops. These are questions that anthropologists are just starting to begin to answer 